Hello and welcome to Saving Lives in Slow Motion. Today, I'd like to talk about AI in medicine. Artificial intelligence, it has changed the world already and it's going to change the world even more in years to come. I've got to be honest, it scares me. And the reason is, you know, well, there's so many reasons, I don't know where to start. But for instance, you think you're listening to my voice, this could just be AI. Maybe it is. You've got no way of telling. And I think that kind of uncertainty and inadvertent duplicity that any kind of technology can have does worry me. But when it comes to medicine, there are some incredible advances that AI has to offer, which I think are really exciting. And the reason I'm thinking about it is I was thinking about writing a second book. And apart from the fact that it's enormous amounts of effort and takes a lot of time and research, I, it got me thinking about whether artificial intelligence would affect any kind of book that you write, that anyone writes on health in the future because not one industry is going to be unaffected by it. And if you think about everyday things that we all do or use or um, are afforded, for example, the design of the glass that I'm drinking water out of now, um, or the fact that I've got to write a bit of copy for something, or the fact that I want to digitize some old photos and put them into some kind of order. All of those things are really AIable, you know, they really are. And so it's something we're going to have to live with. Now, I first came across AI in medicine when I read a paper on the use of AI in radiology. And the premise is that however great a radiologist you are, if you're looking at a scan, AI is going to be better than you at picking up abnormalities. Now, I've got a couple of mates who are radiologists, and generally they're fans of it. But one of the things about AI is it picks up on every single defect on a scan. So it'll pick up on things that may or may not be that relevant clinically. But because it's machine learning, and that's what AI is, which we'll come on to in a bit, um, it'll learn what's pathological and what needs actioning and what doesn't. And this is the scary and awesome thing about AI. It just gets better and better and better. So um, I have to say, I'm not a techie person, really. I, I love what technology can do, but I'm not really one of those guys that understands the ins and outs of, you know, the maths and all that sort of stuff. But my understanding of AI is that it can follow algorithms and crunch data like nothing else. And what it does from that is it learns patterns and analyzes complex data, which then enables it to learn this thing called deep learning, uh, where it makes links a bit, a little bit like the human brain in some ways. And certainly up until a couple of years ago, that's what AI was. We're now in the realm of what's known as generative AI, which is like ChatGPT, for example, where you put in some sort of question or a prompt and then it generates an answer and I don't know whether any of you have seen it but there are some programs out there for AI generated art and you can actually tell the program what you want it to draw something completely fictitious like you know draw a picture of me getting um, swamped by quicksand and it will generate that cartoon immediately and it's it's just amazing Anyway, that's my 101 for myself on what I think AI is. How can it help in terms of our health? Well, clearly lots of ways, because nearly every doctor I seem to bump into under a certain age and most medical students are doing something in the tech sector or want to do something in that sector and are obsessed with AI. Plus, there are two companies that I know well in terms of supporting them and believing in what they do and they both use AI. Now one is a medical monitoring company and one is Leafyard who I'm partnered with which uses CBT through an app. Except because it uses AI it's totally tailored to the user so if lots of people got on the app 
then their journeys would be different depending on their responses. Very clever. But there's that kind of obvious machine-style analytical intelligence that AI has. But what about the more dull, mundane stuff? So what about saving a doctor's time, which doesn't seem quite so sexy? Well, AI can do that. It will be able to order tests and write certain things in patient notes. That's pretty good, isn't it? What about if we extrapolate that and still staying with the patient? What if AI could, well, we know already that it can mimic voices. It can take video and transcribe it into other languages, retaining the voice of the person speaking. What if it could actually analyze a person's voice and tell based on pattern recognition of listening to that person's voice over a long period of time, whether they were upset, whether they were depressed, whether they had throat cancer, for example. These things are all possible. And this is why I think artificial intelligence is boundless in terms of its potential. So I think most of us accept that it can do things like detect lung cancer from CT scans. It can read things like ECGs, you know, heart tracings. It can even classify lesions on the skin and root out skin cancers and, and all sorts of other diagnostic things. And if you kind of think about the simpler things like managing diaries or pattern recognition in terms of patient behaviours, it's pretty mind-blowing. Some years ago, um, some friends of friends of mine at Ada Health, which is an AI-driven symptom-based platform, um, and they're based in Berlin, came to our practice, actually, just for a visit. And I was absolutely shocked. This is, bear in mind, this is maybe four years ago. I was shocked that at that time, they said that AI could mimic a doctor's behaviours. So in terms of what kind of is a, is a core part of the doctor-patient relationship, because AI, if, if nothing else, you know, in terms of being inferior to a doctor, I feel doesn't have that human connection. We can argue about whether AI has consciousness and what consciousness means, but it got me thinking about what a futuristic clinic where everything that is AI-able was using AI and, and how that would look or might look. And what this means, and this is one of the downsides, is that there'd be less people in employment because once you machine learn, you can you know, divest a lot of functions, particularly in healthcare or in any kind of business, really, over to AI. I mean, look at things like ChatGPT and how it writes copy. Um, and I can tell you, you know, computers and machines are subject to error, but they don't make mistakes like copywriters. Or unlike copywriters, I should say. I made a mistake there, didn't I? So let's take a GP surgery. You ring up or you go online and it knows who you are. The AI system or the phone system or the online system immediately knows what your favourite greeting is and also might know what days you work and what days you're available for appointments and your medical history. So it takes all of these things and then asks you how the surgery can help. Now, if it's got software that can analyse your voice, it will be able to tell uh, whether you're feeling stressed or anxious, or even whether your speech is slower than normal. You say that you've got abdominal pain and they book you an appointment face to face. You come into the building and the AI monitors around the place clocks that your walking speed is not quite as fast as normal. It works out that it might be because you're in pain, but also wonders whether you might have a urine infection, so asks you and prompts you at the desk with a sign, with a, with a message on the automated check-in to um, do a urine sample, which I think most doctors would want anyway with abdominal pain. While you wait in the waiting room, it works out. In fact, it knows what your preferences are. And so on the tablet that is provided, it provides options in terms of health education or entertainment. It's time for you to go into the doctor's office and you walk in and 
for the first time a human sees you, greets you, you sit down, you tell the doctor the problem, she's already got a good idea of what it's all about. Your urine is dipped and you're examined and it turns out that it's probably nothing serious. But of course the doctor has an AI assistant which helps her come to that decision. Then her notes get written up and you're automatically sent a prompt by the clinical software system to check that you're okay so that you're able to contact the surgery easily if you're feeling worse. Now that is me making stuff up off the cuff and I've missed lots of bits out because as I said I'm not a tech guy but I mean wow in terms of efficiency and time saving what a game changer and I think we're really at the cusp of something awesome and and I mean it in the true sense of the word. Now earlier on when I said that AI doesn't make mistakes that's mm, not quite true because I've noticed on ChatGPT for example if I give it um, some information it will occasionally I imagine it goes off on a search around the internet and, and, and scours what it can for information and then will make the odd assumption or an educated guess. Now that that's how you learn. You don't always get things right. But what, what I love about AI is that the more it does it, the more it learns. So it won't make the same mistake again. And I guess my worry is that when it thinks that it's cleverer than us, which it already is, you know, will it be able to override us? There's there's all these anecdotes about how AI has already learnt to lie in inverted commas. And I saw an Instagram post recently about how to get through the, you know, the capture um, pictures where it says, oh, pick or click on all the squares that have a pavement in it or something like that um, to prove that you're human and not a robot. Uh, apparently, AI managed to get someone on, you know, Fiverr or people per hour to actually get through that bit for them. So it sort of, it, it, it you know, which is quite dark in a way because it sounds as though its consciousness um, is also able to be dishonest. I don't know how valid that case was, but, um, you know, and this is the worry, you know, how does how does AI stay within the realms of medical ethics? I guess that's what I'm saying. I don't know is the answer, and I don't know who it is that's responsible. Is it the people that make the AI? Is it medical establishments, you know, where where does the responsibility for that lie? I also worry a bit about data and how it's handled, because that's what feeds AI, that's what it lives for and lives on, it crunches data. How secure is that data? You know, these are the kind of things that we need to be asking. Okay, look, I'm going to leave it there. I just wanted to open up the conversation because I know this is huge and I know it's something we all need to know a bit more about and it's going to become a normal part of everyone's lives. One final thought that I'm going to leave you with. The biggest worry I have with AI is reality. And it's not about whether it has a conscience or whether AI has some sort of machine consciousness. It's about how you know whether something's real or not. And it's already happening with, you know, ChatGPT writing CVs and resumes and I just wonder whether there's going to be a backlash at some point where companies and organizations are going to insist on real life face-to-face -face interactions. I bet by the time that happens AI will be so sophisticated that there'd be a way of faking that where there'd be some sort of app where you turn up and you know you hit some button on an AI program that makes you really good at getting through interviews. <laughs> I don't know. It's mind blowing just thinking about it. Let me know what you think. What do you think of AI? Do you think it's useful? Do you think it's dangerous? Do you think it's a bit of both? Have you got experience of it? Uh, and what are your hopes for using it for positive reasons for the future? Thank you again for listening. I really, really appreciate it. It's so great to have your feedback. Do let me know if you want me to cover any particular topics. And once again, until next time, do stay well, 
take care, look after yourself. And until next time, bye for now.